So, and one of the questions uh, that's often asked in this industry is around the privacy and security of health information. Uh, many patients are concerned that um, their health information is going to be put on the internet. Their medical record is going to be put on the internet. If that were the case, it would have been done already. The reason this is so hard is that we're not putting patients' information on the internet. What we're trying to do is create a structured, secure messaging framework that allows information to flow to who needs that information for the purposes of improving healthcare for that patient. We would like for that information to flow to the patient, and the patient has access to the information that they need to make financial decisions and healthcare decisions, either for themselves or for their family members. I'm a member of the sandwich generation. I manage my parents' health care, I manage my health care, my spouse's health care, and my kids' health care. To the extent that I can do that at midnight through a secure framework of messaging, I'm much better off because I work all day. Right? And so I think patients need to have access to information that helps them manage their own health care and their family's health care. The physician needs to have access to information when they're actually treating a patient, whether in, it's in a scheduled appointment or an urgent situation. And so through health information exchange efforts and initiatives like this one, we're creating the foundation for that secure messaging to occur that protects a patient's information to the extent possible um, in the same way that we go through extreme pains to try and protect people's financial information and other information when they're doing transactions virtually. So right now in the marketplace, there are personal health record applications that are available on the internet. There are also personal health record applications that are available through your, your payer, right? Your managed care company. And those actually for some people work really well because they are desperately trying to figure out a way to pool all that data together so that they have it when they need it. If they're traveling, they want to know that they have all their prescriptions in one place, their allergies are documented in one place, or if they have a chronic condition, that that's documented in a way that someone could have access to it at, when they decide that they want to give access to that information. Most people have a personal health record, whether it's a file cabinet, <laughs> bunches of little pieces of paper all over their house, or magnets on the refrigerator, or using one of the internet and web-based solutions that are available. I think those will always continue to be there and exist. What we would hope to do and we plan to do here in California is perfecting that in such a way that patients and providers can populate that personal health record and then it's accessible regardless of who uh, created it or how and where it was established. And so somehow we need to know that the personal health record exists. It's not helpful to have a personal health record through Microsoft Vault or Google if your doctor doesn't know that it's there in an emergency. And so part of our challenge is figuring out how do we ensure that information that's available is known. And that's our first product and service out of the box with this provider directory service, is giving providers access to who has what information and then how you can share information for the benefit of the patient. The World Wide Web is such a wonderful, innovative, innovative tool. And so what's interesting about that is we want to use that resource, the internet resource, and use it in such a way that we've ensured the standards and the protocols for either uploading information or downloading information are consistent with the federal laws that have been in place, put into place, as well as establish any state laws or eliminate barriers that would impede that data from being accessible. Um, it's different than just um, your doctor establishing a web portal or something where anyone can have access to that information. In essence, it's creating the health information exchange movement is standardizing data in a way that when it's shared and exchanged, it can actually populate a system that allows for the aggregation of data for reporting clinical reporting, public health reporting, quality reporting. So it's a little bit different than putting the data somewhere and people 
being able to look at it or view it at their leisure or at their pleasure. It's transporting information in a structured format and then populating a system in a way that allows for the generation of a report or information, even in a visual way that helps doctors make very quick decisions, um, which they have to do you know, daily, hourly. Um, and is often hard to do if that information is not right in front of them. Well, that's an interesting concept, and it's funny, the folks that have been doing clinical research have probably been on this bandwagon longer than many of us um, because they really understand the, the need and the value that comes from um, digitizing information. They really get it because if they could have those structured, uh, that structured data in the field that makes sense, um, it would expedite lo a lot of the research that's being done right now, and you can really get to the analysis, right, and not spend so much time on the data collection. Well, when you talk about financial sustainability of health information exchange, there are a couple things that go into that pot, and one of them that c often causes angst with consumers is the second um, dairy use of information. Um, Data needs to be available to certain people, to certain entities and certain institutions. Um, but at the same time, I think we have to make sure we have the right policies in place that govern who has access to it um, and for what good or for what benefit. Um, and that's really the value of a public benefit corporation like Cali Connect. Our role is to serve as the trusted source um, of that information and then to help enable policy development that protects that individual's information, but also create some level of trust around data sharing um, that would hopefully make people feel a little bit more comfortable with the concept of health information exchange and electronic medical records. Um, one of the uh, panelists yesterday was asked a question about the secondary use of data and some of the barriers to health information exchange. And he mentioned how one of the things that we need in order to eliminate uh, racial disparities, right? There are significant disparities um, in health outcomes for people based on race. Um, and that's a result of residuals of discrimination, and not residuals, discrimination still occurs, um, but our discriminatory processes and systems. So there's this fear or concern from people giving the data up front, and then there's a fear or concern when people are asked the data on the back end because they think it's going to be used in a discriminatory way. In all honesty, I don't know how to overcome the barrier that comes from people's fear of data being used against them or used in an unscrupulous way, other than to create uh, sanctions and legal penalties that would prohibit um, payers from doing that, that would prohibit employers from doing that, would really make it unlawful to use the data in a discriminatory way, and then to put sanctions that create enough fear or concern among the wrongdoers that they think twice before they do it, and they're penalized in the event that they do. Um, I guess I'm a realist. Discrimination occurs. I, I, I see it. I experience it as an African-American female every single day. and so. It's going to occur with the misuse of health information. Um, I'm personally not fearful of that because it occurs to me every day. And so the same legal barriers and sanctions that are put in place to protect me or protect others um, in other venues need to be put into place to protect people here as well. It's a risk that we have to take. We have to take the risk of the data being used for good against the risk of the data being used for bad. If we have the information, we can actually demonstrate that discrimination is occurring, right? That more African American females are dying from HIV than any other demographic. If we can get that data and demonstrate that that's a problem, it gives us some tools and some resources to fight the problem. But if folks are afraid of disclosing, then it makes it that much harder, right, to change that particular circumstance, which is a really detrimental circumstance in our community.